Uh, hi there, welcome to my Python tutorial series and in this video we're gonna continue building our Telegram bots. The only problem is that I made my previous video a long time ago and I don't really remember what we have to do in this video but presumably we have to continue building our, you know, project structure and how to properly organize, you know, dispatcher, dispatcher object, handlers and different other stuff. Yeah, so in this video I'm planning to discuss about the proper project structure and how to properly utilize different components from Agram boat. I think that's pretty much it. Let me just uh, review my project structure and um, we're gonna continue in the next part of our video. Let's see. Uh, I just opened our, yeah, I just opened my project structure. Here we have Agram 3 version 3 uh, directory. You can find the, you can find this repository uh, by the link provided in the description section below. So uh, in this case, I'm planning to create here a new folder. This folder will be something like just, uh, I think this is, will be something like lesson four because this is lesson four or lesson five. I don't really remember this, but I think that's fine to create a new project folder. Yeah, so here I already created something like bot handler services. Yeah, that's cool. So, ah, okay. So I already had the project structure here. Yeah, that's cool. And basically there is a little update for our tutorial series because an official released Agron 3.2.0 uh, rolled out. So we can basically use 3.2 Agron. This is the latest version of our Agrum library. You can find the official documentation by the link provided in the comment section below and, and in a description as well. So yeah, uh, basically we have to upgrade our Agrum library. And you know, I will probably create a new virtual environment inside our... Yeah, I will basically create a new project folder in order to explain you everything from scratch. But, you know, in more detailed matter, we're following the best practices in building boats. So, with no further ado, let's jump right in. Hey, I'm here again, and now we are Lesson 4 Directory. And here in Lesson 4 Directory, I'm gonna do everything from scratch, because I don't really remember where we stop. Uh, I think it's a good idea to start from scratch, because um, there is a little update in Agrum 3. They officially released a new version like 3.2, as I've already mentioned. So I think it's it's a really good idea to start from scratch and make some changes along the way. So the first thing we have to create here is our virtual environment. I'm gonna create a virtual environment, new virtual environment, exactly inside our project folder, right over here. And for this reason, if you are using a Mac like me, you have to use Python-M Venv, and after this, you are using the name of your Venv, and yeah, probably not found Python. On Mac, you have to use Python 3-M. When this is just the name of your virtual environment, virtual environment will encapsulate everything that's related to your project. Uh, any dependencies, any packages that you are planning to use in your project are encapsulated inside this uh, Venf directory, inside this virtual environment. So you have to use this script to activate a virtual environment. In order to do this, you have to use the name of your of your virtual environment directory like uh, then here you have been in activate on your mac we have successfully activated our virtual environment and uh, basically that's it the next step is to install our agrum library and here we just can use for example pip install agrum pip install dash agrum yeah and i successfully installed my uh, python agrum the latest version on my computer in my in my local virtual environment so basically we have here can even check this by by pip list command and we have here agram the 3.2.0 we have a stable latest released 3.2.0 so that's cool the first thing we have to do right now is to export our dependencies we have in our current working environment into some kind of requirements.txt this file is necessary for you know, it's basically necessary for a more professional development environment, like when you have multiple developers or lots of environments when you can execute your code, but it's uh, typically considered as a best practice in development process. So it's always a good idea to export this something uh, by the following command. So you can use pip list requirements uh, txt. So yeah, that's a good idea. Now we have requirements txt. This is basically the list of all of all our dependencies we are using currently in this project setup. 
Cool. Okay, so segging into our next point, we have to create a new folder from our previous video lesson. We already know this is going to be a folder, folder bot. The folder bot typically contains all the source code, all the business logic that's related with our bot. We're going to create here something, some kind of handlers, services, utilities. There is going to be lots of stuff there, uh, database connections and so on. I'm planning to consider lots of stuff, lots of stuff. So yeah, this is pretty cool. Uh, the next thing is create main.py. Main.py is the entry point to our program. Um, yeah, and also I'm planning to create here a token API. This is not really good practice to create a separate file for a token API because we typically, uh, you know, hide this the tokens in, or, you know, GitHub Actions, Secrets, or uh, .nf file, but for our current project setup, this is uh, perfectly fine to create token API.py. For our current project setup, this is, this is simple, this is straightforward, and we just keep the things simple. We just keep everything simple as much as possible, so you could understand everything, how to properly create your project setup from scratch. You have you know, you have to fully comprehension how everything fits together. Uh, and uh, to the end of this tutorial series, you are going to be able to fully understand how, uh, you know, how everything comes together, how different components interact with each other and how, and you're going to be able to understand how to properly optimize your code and make your solution much more efficient in terms of you know, security measures or in terms of code optimization, performance optimization, and so on. So I'm planning to basically create a full tutorial series, you know, about a project structure and different stuff and uh, using using following best practices in bot development as well. So the next thing is to just copy the source code from our previous video lesson and uh, quickly walk through the source code because I just don't want to waste much of your time and my time for this stuff, let's just copy everything from our previous. How to do this? Let me let me do that. Yeah, it works. Okay, I found a way to copy all the content from our previous video license. Cool. We have something like this. We had uh, the main function. This is basically oh uh, yeah, this is basically the entry point for our program. Here we're going to create a dispatcher object, register our rotors, place here pass through our bot instance. We're planning to run our main coroutine, our entry point in our, you know, and start our event loop. And this is just a thematic expression in Python that will let us to execute this part of the code exactly when this code is executed by itself through our terminal, you know, without export or import into other files. Yeah, you can read more about this in the official Python documentation. This is not the main stuff of our video, so I'm not gonna focus on this. I would better focus on our project setup. So the next thing, we have a register rotors function that basically registers all the functions and all the rotors uh, we have. Rotors is just like, you know, a tree structure in our um, updates handling. When update will come to our dispatcher, it just redirects this update object to a specific rotor. So just rotor is like, you know, is like rotor in Vue.js, rotor in React applications or anywhere. It's just something like, uh, you know, something that uh, vectors your update to the specific handler. So this is basically like a dispatcher object, small dispatcher object that just mirrors its functionality, right? So, and it doesn't resolve bot instance. And this is not surprising because we didn't create this thing yet. So we have to create a new file and I'm gonna, I'm gonna name this like bot instance. And this bot instance we had created, mm, yeah, let me just type this. From Agrum library, we had to import here a bot and types. And also we have token API. From token API, we're planning to import a token API. We don't have this constant created yet, but you already know how to do this. We have uh, parse mode HTML and uh, we also uh, pass through here token API. This is basically authentication token that's being used for connecting to our Telegram API. And uh, I also had explanatory diagram where I was discussing about our Telegram API and different components, how they interact with each other, how they are interconnected in our workflow. So 
you can find this video that was probably the first or the second one in this tutorial series. And I think this is pretty helpful for newcomers and for beginners to uh, fully comprehend how everything fits together. Here we also have an import from our handlers, user handlers, and our boat directory. I didn't create anything yet, so let's go to our bot directory here. I'm planning to create init.py. Init.py is basically API for importing or exporting your libraries, your packages. So this is basically something that tells our uh, Python, you know, identify this folder as a Python package. And here we can specify different imports or exports that will be accessible outside this package. And we'll be able to specify exactly that names, that keywords, we would like to use to import our libraries. So this is a little bit complex stuff. And I think you have to refer to the specific examples and implementations of this. So I'm not planning to discuss about it. I'm not planning to go deeper into this stuff in, in this tutorial, because this is a subject for our later videos, for our later tutorials. So I think the best way of thinking about this, this is something that tells our Python uh, hey, our bot library is just a library. This is just a package. This is something that we are being, we are going to use as a package, as a uh, package of our modules, of our different stuff we are going to use. So they will be easily imported into our main.py if we would like to. So yeah, I think that's it. So let's go further and uh, let's create a new folder that will be handlers. Yeah, this is also a Python package. So I'm planning to create here init.py and I'm also planning to create here something like, you know, mm, user handlers, user handlers. And this user handlers, I had the following from Agrum library uh, filters. From Agrum, I'm planning to import router and the types. Cool. So this is the basic and the main object in our class of our Agrum library that will let you to redirect and vector the updates from Telegram API once they arrive at our Telegram boat. So once any updates from Telegram API arrive, our Telegram dispatcher, bot dispatcher, we typically redirect them by this provided class. We redirect them exactly to that specific handler that should be responsible for this. So we have lots of handlers and some of these handlers should be responsible for the specific updates. For example, if we have a message object that equals to start command, we have to use some handler. Handler will, will handle this message object, will process that and will generate some response to our Telegram API. But our handler cannot just handle this message object because it doesn't know about existence of this object. And this is exactly that place or our rotor and where our dispatcher comes into play. They basically takes this message object from our Telegram API and tells our handler, hey, we have a new message object. So you are responsible for handling this message object. So you basically have to be executed and process this message object. So our handler is just a handler. You know, this is just a processor, something that processes our message. But rotor and dispatcher are the brain of our boat. Dispatcher, dispatcher is the main rotor and our rotor class, is, this is something like a little dispatcher that helps our main dispatcher to, to make this job more, uh, to have a more granular, you know, granular access to our handlers to make our code more modular and more maintainable. So this is more about more modular code when you can specifically redirect your update to the specific handler group. It might be a bit complex or messy or overwhelming for you or a, a little bit com confusing, perplexing. That's absolutely normal if you don't understand something for now. But the more you dive into this stuff, the more you go deeper into specific implementations and uh, the more experience you have, the better you understand this stuff, the better you grasp the whole concept and the whole picture, how everything fits together. So we are just building the whole picture by the small pieces. We're basically consider handlers. After this, we move to services, utilities, database connections, and everything. And the more experience you gain, the better comprehension you have. So this is 
extremely important not to just copy and paste the code from these video tutorials, but it's also very important for you to follow the logic and uh, try to implement your own solution, trying to, you know, commit lots of mistakes because mistakes are a good way to gain new experience and better understand something. If you want to go deeper into this stuff, you can simply open this rotor class, just press command if you are working on Mac or Control and press in this class and you can find here a documentation, you can find here rotor, can wrote update and nested updates like messages, callback queries, posts. They have a good documentation, all of stuff here. You can find all the methods you want. You can find here all the attributes. You can explore this. You can go through all of this stuff. So just investigate this thing. Yeah, so I think this is really helpful to read all of this. And if you have any troubles, I think that's a good way to understand the underlying intricacies, how everything is implemented. I just digressed a bit, so let's continue our discussion. And yeah, here we had a user rotor. So this is basically something like I've already told you what it is. So we're here to create a simple empty rotor object. And here we're going to refer to this user router and we're going to create um, no, basically we are going to create a new decorator object. You can uh, read more about decorator objects. So this is this is something that makes our asynchronous Python functions a handler. That's it. So we have uh, a function common start and common start takes message object. We have to specify here it has a types message and this basically returns nothing. Let's put here nothing. Yeah. So this decorator decorates this function. It takes this Pythonic function in Pythonic style and basically just makes this a uh, handler. So this takes our Python function and turns it into handler. I think you understand this. I hope for that. Command is a built-in filter. I've already talked about this, I guess. Um, here is a little documentation for our code. Process the start command. This is cool. If you if you are using doc strings in your code, because it will, you know, it will make your code much more readable and development friendly. So other developers will understand what you are doing here. And yeah, so this is, this is just best practice. And here we're just answering our message, something like this, uh, hello world. We're using here HTML tag. I'm using this intentionally. Uh, basically, I would like to show you that we can use Markdown or HTML parse mode in our responses. I think that's it. So we didn't have anything else except our token API. We have to create here a new variable. I'm going to name this to the code, place it here. Yeah, cool. So the next thing I have to do is just uh, start our main.py and let's see what we have here. Nothing happens. That's a good sign. That's a positive sign because that means that our bot is functioning. Let's try to use start command and we have a response. We have the same response as in our previous video. But in this video, we're just walk through again our project structure. So basically we just ensured a solid start for our next videos. I just reviewed this for myself and I think you also found this video helpful. Yeah, so so that's pretty much it for this today's video. I also wanted to mention something, but I don't remember actually what I wanted to say. So in our next video, we're planning to move forward. And I think in our next videos, we're going to build our simple bot utilizing best practices and uh, complex project structure. Um, yeah, but the bot itself will be simple and straightforward, but we're using the good project structure and lots of features from Agrum libraries. So yeah, yeah. So I guess that's all of it. That's all I had for this video. And uh, I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Goodbye.